think about the classical music industry and even the music industry as a whole, we think of major cities like New York, Chicago, or Philadelphia. But thanks to innovation and technology, independent record labels in small towns across the United States are equally able to tap into larger markets and affect the direction in the industry. One such place is the small town of New Albany, Indiana, a town nestled in the Ohio River Valley with 38,000 citizens who make up this unique place across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. Now, Albany is also the home of one of the most innovative regional universities in the country, Indiana University Southeast, a university that boasts a ninth ranking in Business Week magazine for the best MBA program in the country, nationally recognized research in psychology, and an emerging record label that has already garnered positive reviews and attention overseas, New Dynamic Records, a label that is the first of its kind in the history of Indiana University. New Dynamic was formed in 2005 with a mission of discovering and fully funding the recording of some of the world's most gifted performers who play unique music outside of the mainstream. That is, well, not your father's classical music. I think we're living in a very exciting time when it comes to the world of art and music, what most people call classical music. And what I mean by classical music is the music written by the Beethovens and the Mozarts of today. Uh, what's really engaging about this generation of composers is not only the wide range of styles a composer will typically pull from, but the unique experience we get as audience members when we hear, sometimes, you know, for the first time ever, the new sounds composers can create from traditional instruments like the piano, the cello, or the saxophone. And uh, when it comes to these things, you know, I think composers today have a richer history to pull from than, say, Mahler or Debussy, just by the fact that we have the results in our hands of all the experimentation and music that happened in the 20th century. And so we have, and we also have better technology, I believe, which enables us to expand our sound possibilities than really ever before. So one of the reasons why I started New Dynamic Records was to not only show this new dynamic in art music of our time, but to invite those who have or may have not um, heard these new ideas being brought to life to, to join us in this experience. Since its first release in 2006, New Dynamic Records has sold thousands of dollars with the CDs and numerous tracks to customers in Japan, Europe, Australia, and the US, and has achieved more than 15,000 views of its featured artist videos worldwide. These may seem small for the standards of the billion dollar pop industry, but these figures tell a more successful story considering the size of the small classical music market. Eric Stem, founder of New Dynamic Records, talks about the challenges of forming the label. Well, one of the challenges that I faced when I started New Dynamic uh, was one that I think the pop industry was facing at the time, and that was this noticeable decline in CD sales. Uh, I remember in 2005, uh, when I first formed the group, um, reading articles with headlines like, Tower Records is closing its doors, and, or the graying of the record store. Uh, and thinking to myself, well, you know, this probably can't be a good thing. So, um, but at the same time, I read articles about how people of all generations, actually, were attending concerts more than ever before. And this was the case with both uh, the pop and classical music industries. And uh, also that digital sales were increasing. Uh, for instance, the share of iTunes was noticeably going up every year. So I knew it wasn't that people weren't listening to new music or you know experiencing it uh, in other ways it's just that people were combining older ways of experiencing music with newer ways and the latter is especially true uh, of recorded music so i think the challenge for record labels in the future will be finding new ways to keep up with our culture and uh, how we experience recorded music and taking advantage of technology to try new things uh, like, for example, GPS triggered music that plays different works or sounds in your car, all tracked by your GPS device that change depending on 
where you're driving. Um, and, and another thing what will also be interesting to see for the future is how record labels respond to new experiences in the concert hall. Uh, today, for instance, groups like Eighth Blackbird are exper experimenting basically with lighting and choreography to enhance the music, which is a visual component important to the experience of that music. So visual elements will need to be captured by record labels as well, I think. Um, one group, for example, that does this uh, in addition to Eighth Blackbird, and does this in a very intriguing way, I think, is a group we recorded uh, for our third release, and that is the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble. What you're listening to here is a live performance of a piece called Lysamander by composer Russell Pinkston for Flute and Electronics. And this was part of a concert given by the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble at IU Southeast in 2008. And as you can see, flautist Lindsay Goodman is performing in the balcony on the right side of the hall, so everyone is turned to the right looking up. And Russell, and I don't think you can see him here in this shot, is about 20 feet away monitoring a computer that controls a software program called Max MSP that is basically reacting to the pitches coming out of Lindsay's flute. So what is actually happening here is every time Lindsay plays a pitch or a melodic line, the computer captures the music and spins it off with its own uh, computer-generated sounds, um, which then Lindsay reacts to herself. Uh, so you can kind of characterize this as a duet between human and machine, uh, so to speak, which is actually a technology and a very interesting one too that has been in development for years but that hasn't been commonly experienced in the concert hall until this century. And as you can see here, the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble was, and still is, uh, very innovative in the way they present the music to the audience. Uh, so it's not your typical musicians on the stage playing in a formal dress with white lights and the audience politely clapping in between pieces. It's actually a seamless theatrical experience with music at the forefront uh, that uses lighting, choreographic elements, and sometimes props and costumes and other visually engaging elements that work with the music itself. And as you can see from the previous clip, the flautist Lindsay Goodman plays from high up on the balcony uh, while lighting is constantly changing, focusing in and out, or, out from her, uh, while the speakers that are uh, connected to the computer uh, program that's running Max MSP uh, are down below on a dark main stage. Uh, and so when you're sitting there as a member of the audience, uh, what you hear is the sound coming from the darkness that is enveloping the entire hall uh, while you see the flautist playing up there in the balcony with all kinds of changing patterns and colors of light uh, that are flowing with the changing patterns and sounds of the music. Um, I was there myself and I, I recall that it, it's, it's an experience I'll never forget. So, you know, this kind of innovation is something that we, you know, as a record label, and I think even artists as well, uh, want to explore with both the music and our own personal experiences with music. If you want to know where the recordings happen behind the scenes, you only need to travel across the river to TNT Productions one of the largest studios in Louisville that was built from the ground up by President and CEO Tim Hartel. It was here that New Dynamic Records recorded its first featured group, the Aurelia Saxophone Quartet, for their release, Spiritual Overdrive. That was probably my first saxophone quartet CD, and it was really astonishing to me to hear the different sounds that could be produced by a saxophone. Obviously, I recorded lots of saxophones in my life, um, but oftentimes it was pr primarily in the jazz situation. So I had done some classical things, but they were solo or with piano. Um, but the quartet and all of those dis different instruments and the, and the beats they produced, um, the overtones, and some of the techniques that were used were, were very new to me, and it was very challenging to try to capture them and reproduce them in a realistic manner. But it was also a lot of fun, particularly when you put the headphones on to hear all those different sounds working together and see what they did. One, one of the things I really like about working 
uh, with you in New Dynamic Records is the fact that you bring in people from not only the Louisville area, but uh, throughout the entire country, and, and in this case of Aurelia, you know, from Europe and, you know, throughout the world. Um, so it's not only a musical experience, but I get to experience other cultures and other ways of doing things. Um, not to mention that the, the quality of the musicianship is, is really high, so it's, it's, you know, some of the best music that I get to work on as far as not only compositionally, but performance-wise is the new dynamic stuff. I think that oftentimes people have misperceptions about what the recording process really is. Uh, on one hand, you have all of these people who have grown up sort of in the pop and rock genre who think that there's this great creative experience that goes on in the recording studio where the band comes in and has a great idea and then they play this music and the engineer and the producer all get together and come up with these wonderful George Martin-esque ideas about, hey, let's do this and let's do that. and It's all a good time. In, in reality, Recording is a very, very difficult job. It's grueling on the musicians. It's headache producing for the engineering and producing staff. And it's amazing anybody is really stupid enough to do it. <laughs> um, I think people would be really fascinated or, or surprised on the amount of editing all of these projects involve. Um, oftentimes, there's two or three edits even within a single measure. Uh, on a three-minute movement of a piece, sometimes there's a hundred sp splices that we put together. Um, there's been pitch, tempo, balance changes that, that happen very quickly. Um, and the fact that most of these pieces were never actually even performed in their entirety during the whole recording session, uh, it would, I think, surprise a lot of people. Daniel Gillum, station manager and host of WUOL 90.5 FM is also a composer and knows firsthand the importance of indie labels and their recent role in promoting new music. We're not seeing an audience purchasing CDs anymore. Uh, we're seeing more downloads of course being made. Uh, less, the audience is not consuming classical CDs as we know them in that traditional fashion. Uh, so you, you really are going to have to recreate the, the model and, and move in a new direction I think that the more uh, a record label can embrace uh, the, the newer forms of media and, and embracing ways of, of con communicating and distributing their material that's not through a plastic disc that you have to purchase in a store that's wrapped in cellophane for $15, uh, that model is dead. And any, any record label that, that thinks they can hold on to that is, is, is not going to survive. Um, but, but it's these labels that are artist-driven, that are artist-led, um, that are ensemble-led, that are composer-led. Those are, the, I think, the, the new waves in, in, the music, in the classical music industry, in, industry, if you want to call it that, classical music anymore. It's so, it's so varied. I think New Dynamic Records has uh, the, the right idea um, for, for a few reasons. One of them is they're not constrained by record sales. And when, when Selling a lot of CDs to recoup uh, expenses and all of this isn't an issue, then you're able to be more creative and, and be more free artistically. And that's really something that's needed uh, in, in, our, in our day and age uh, with, with CDs and performances. And uh, the other thing is that it allows the performers to have that artistic freedom. Uh, you know, for, for someone to come up to a performance, a performer and an ensemble and say, hey, I'm going to give you basically uh, the, the recording studio and a CD of you playing. You get to pick the music. You get to, um, to, to work with the composers you want to work with. Uh, and that's got to be just a, a, a breath of fresh air. Despite several setbacks in the economy, new art music continues to thrive with newly formed groups and emerging artists from around the country who redefine old models, rethinking what it means to be a musician and composer of this century. In a field where most record labels focus on music of bygone eras or only artists who are famous, New Dynamic Records turns the other way and expands its repertoire by recording music that typically goes unnoticed by the establishment. As a discovery label, New Dynamic not only released numerous commissions by composers, some as young as 25, 
but is now focusing on groups and artists who are at the early stages of their career. Corey Barnfield, soloist of New Dynamics' fifth album, Journey, explains what it means to be an artist working with an indie label like New Dynamic. What I really love about New Dynamic Records is they really want to get to know you as an artist. What you're doing, what's your story, where have you come from, where are you going, and unlike other CD labels I've seen is they just write your name down, okay you're doing a CD, here's your pieces you're doing, and you're on a list with everybody else on there. They don't tell anything about you, your background, try to get to know you, um, feature you in various ways, and New Dynamic Records is very different in that aspect is they want to know your story. They want to know you as a person, as a musician, as an artist, and they want to get your stuff out there and they want to you know, tell everyone about you and what you're doing. In the upcoming years, New Dynamic Records will travel to New York and record two groups who make breaking the rules of the classical music establishment a typical part of their day. Groups like the Chelsea Symphony Orchestra, an innovative group named after the Chelsea neighborhood in New York where it was founded, is leading the way by commissioning new works and uniquely showcasing fellow orchestra members as conductors, soloists, and composers. This year, New Dynamic Records will be recording another up-and-coming New York group, the Cadillac Moon Ensemble. We caught up with the members of Cadillac Moon and they described how they see themselves as musicians of our time. When I was in my undergrad, I wasn't so sure if I was going to play music as, as my career. And when I, when I finally decided on that and, and got really serious, I guess I was serious in the beginning of my undergrad, but um, when I found that I needed to decide what I was going to do, I remembered that when I was practicing all my standard repertoire, I was being told all these, these things about how to play and you must play this phrase this way and you must take this time here and it was a little frustrating because you get told all these different things from all these different people and someone is always right um, and really I mean when it, so. every, well, yeah, everybody <laughs> always thinks that they're right and with new music it's up to you and I thought that, that was really liberating and it's great because it's up to you, but it's also up to the composer, and it's a, a conversation and a collaboration that you get to have, whereas as much as it's wonderful to play Beethoven and Bach, and I love doing that. I, I don't get to have the same conversation with them. Yeah, when you think of art, uh, to me art means that you're challenging people with it, and so in that sense, in that definition, the art of uh, these dead European composers is essentially not art anymore. It's like the expression when an art is taught in the university, it's officially dead. Because it's no longer challenging. I mean, as much as Beethoven is powerful and amazing, no one is listening to it and having their mind blown. It's not new in that same way. It might be the first time they hear it, but at the same time, it's not being created. It's not um, challenging audiences the same way it once did. And so to be on the edge of something where you really have a chance to be a part of an art form as it's being created and conceived, that's really exciting and that's something that I think you don't really want to miss out. And that's when um, I see being on the edge of something. That's, that's kind of what I mean, uh, to say that we're on the edge of this new movement, if you want to call it that, or whatever's happening in, in our scene. You know, that's really an exciting place to be. I think I'd add by saying, you know, talking about challenging audiences, it actually challenges me personally a lot more than, you know, I mean, the percussion writing and a lot of that music is limited to to nothing more than timpani, snare drum, triangle, bass drum, you know. Um, this album alone, I, I played, what, 10, 15 times that many instruments myself, you know, and that was a section of five guys. And you sit there and you count 200 measures and you play two notes and then you sit back down and you put your black tux on and it's great. It's, it's a really cool experience to be part of that, but but. I came to new music as kind of a challenge to myself to, you know, reach out beyond that and, you know, see how many different things I could play all at one time <laughs> without just spinning around in circles and not knowing what I'm doing anymore. It's really like you get to problem solve on your own too, like you don't have other people having played these pieces before that have already figured out all this stuff, you know, there's no performer's editions of, uh, <laughs> of this music, you know, you're handed a fresh part which oftentimes has no indications. Uh, for the player, and so you really get to sit down with the score and it's blank, 
um, for a performer anyway, and, and really piece it together yourself. And that can be really exciting and challenging. The reality that music has the unique power to reveal something about our experiences beyond what words can express or sights can portray is one that has helped bring an emotional element to the story of humankind for thousands of years. Even though each composer has a different reason for creating music for this purpose, the bond that develops between our more universal experiences is a similar shared result we acquire through the simple act of listening. In the words of Albert Einstein, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science.